welcome back to another episode of Intuition Your First Sense. This is Vicki. Thank you for listening, for being part of this, for sharing the podcast, for subscribing and doing your comments and all of that. Just thank you for being you. This episode is the one where I read a chapter from my book, Everyone Has an It, <laughs> which now, like when I wrote it, it really made sense to me. I was really in it. Um, now when I think about it, I'm like, that's a silly title, but you know what? <laughs> it's written and the content still applies. So what I've been doing is the last episode of the month, I read a chapter from the book and this month is, do you fear it or get excited by it? And as I've been doing, I will read it, but I'm also going to interject a little bit um, and try not to trip over some of the words in this chapter that are so easy to type, but not so easy to say. So let's see how this goes. Do you fear it or get excited by it? Have you ever sat in a movie when the scene was very dramatic? A good place for drama is the screen and waited on the edge of your seat because you just knew something was going to jump out and you were going to scream. You know that feeling, right? Was it fear of the scene and what would happen to the girl who always went downstairs to see what the noise was? Or is it the excitement that she just might do it? She might go downstairs again because this is usually how the story goes. It's hard to tell in that moment, isn't it? It's really difficult to distinguish between the excitement and the fear of it happening. And this is true of the movie of our lives as well. And uh, as I did my readings and coaching and everything, a process that I learned along the way was, and actually this ha helped me in my own childhood trauma work, was to picture my life as a movie and myself as a character and to watch the interaction, hopefully without being engaged in the story. I rarely go into the basement if I hear a noise, so it was pretty easy to stay detached. So try this the next time you find yourself getting involved in the story of something. Take a step back and allow yourself to view it and see if you aren't able to find a solution because you don't get bogged down in the emotion of it all. So last week's podcast was relative to this, right? We can feel joy even if others are hurting. It feels really good to surf on the plot rather than the drama or perhaps write a different ending than what would occur if you were emotionally engaged. It may just give you a perspective that in your too involved state, you wouldn't have been able to see or make room for and allow for the aha moments that, I mean, don't you just love a good aha moment? If you're able to see the story, you are brilliant. But what if it's harder to identify? It doesn't mean you're less brilliant. It simply means your compass could use a little bit of tweaking. And an example of this is when I was reading for a client a few years ago. Well, this is actually more than a few years ago now, because we're talking 10 or 12 years ago. And we were discussing how she could learn what she could from the relationship she was then in before she left it. It was perfectly safe for her to be in it and to learn who she was. And maybe, just maybe it wasn't the relationship that was the issue because we do have a tendency to blame the other person, don't we? The difficulty in seeing the next step to take was really what she was stuck on. Should she leave the relationship? Should she stay in it? And, you know, if it's just not a danger, I think it's important to stick around and figure out how it could shift because I've seen this happen. And then people rediscover the love that they thought was gone. And that's beautiful. So as I was watching her movie intuitively, I asked her if she was aware that fear and excitement have the same vibration in this universe. And they really do. It depends on how we are programmed to respond um, to which one is used. If one hasn't felt safe in their life, um, they will usually respond with a fear feeling. But if one was raised and wired to have an open mind and see the adventure in life, they will often respond with an excited feeling. But from a 
a frequency standpoint, there's not a heck of a lot of difference in between them. So for this client, it was really hard for her to determine the difference in just the short amount of time we had to work together. So I suggested a few exercises and I'm going to suggest them for you too. Now, if you are driving or walking or operating any kind of machinery or a bicycle while listening to this, how about you pause it and come back to it or listen and come back about six minutes into the podcast. So what you're going to do is take a nice deep breath and exhale all the air, all of it, like squeeze out those lungs, really let it go, (laughs) clean out the cobwebs. And then you're going to do it again with gusto. Like you're going to put some power behind this puppy. Close your eyes and imagine a time when you were feeling frightened and unsure of what to do. Can you feel that? Do you feel where it resides in you? It can be different for everyone. So feel into or get a cognitive knowing of where that fear resides within you. Where is it in your body? Okay, so note where that is and we'll come back to it soon. Now take another really deep breath or two and clear out the fear of vibration. Good. Now, remember a time when you were so stinking excited you couldn't stand it and you wanted to shout from the rooftops. Feel that zing? Where does that show up in your body? Where's your knowing about where that is in your body? How does it speak to you? Does it show you the location of the excitement? Okay, note that as well. We're going to breathe again. Takes three really nice, deep, calm breaths all the way down to that diaphragm. I want to see some Buddha bellies here. Stick out that belly. Love the belly. Three times. Okay. Now take a breath and expel all of the air and then take a nice cleansing one to bring it back in again. So how was that for you? Do you know a little bit more about yourself now and where you hold energy? Good. Good job. If not, go back and do the practice. Nobody's watching. Take your time. So often in our busy lives, we go through the day without any intentional breathing. So the more you can do it, the better. It's a good thing that it's an involuntary process or some of us would be in real trouble passing out all the time. Maybe that would be a good thing. You know, as a former breath holder, it probably would have been good if I fell on my face once in a while to remind me to take a breath. Now, even though those two exercises are at opposite ends of our emotional yardstick, they still result in similar physiological responses. Your breathing changes your heart rate goes up, your awareness of the situation you recalled was at an all-time high, and you weren't really sure you were could maintain it for long, were you? So this is what drew me to feel the vibration of both of them without any response and, and to realize that they actually have the same frequency. It was working through my own work, like I said, and trying to figure out, am I always in a fear response that there's a beating coming or am I excited about what life is unveiling? And I just could not differentiate it until I started doing some of this work. And it was exciting to me and explained why so many people have a challenging time shifting behavioral patterns once they're, once we're conditioned into them. And it is fascinating how we moved away from our senses looking for things to make sense when the information was there all along. We just had to listen to our feedback from our body. So let's try the fear exercise again and see if the energy changed for you now that you're a little bit more aware of yourself. So this time, feel in 
to any experience that you want. Maybe you're a little bit nervous about, you were, or you are a little bit nervous about. If it's something real time today, that would be great. <laughs> so feel into it, take a breath, bring up the experience that could be fearful, but might be excitement. And is there a different communication? If it goes to fear, that's okay. That's okay. That's information that you're receiving to help you further understand who you are. Because we still actually need our fear centers in danger situations. There's a reason for that fight or flight response. You know, we're in a dark alley. We don't have to do this experiment. You just get out of the dark alley or a difficult situation. Did you know that most people work with me as a coach because they want to move forward in their professional lives? And then they realize once we start working together, that is a whole person approach. And I am going to help them move through their blocks, their fears, some of the trauma they've experienced and to create a much more aligned life. So many times I hear, this is not what I thought I was signing up for. And that's such wonderful feedback to have because if you're signing up and working with a coach and everybody does it the same, are you really being seen as an individual? At Vicki Baird Coaching, I do it all as an individual and I would love to work with you. Go to VickiBaird.com to check it out and see if you'd like to work with me. So my client and I worked on this for a few sessions and she got really good at seeing her programmed response was to flee a situation when it felt like it was changing. She wasn't yet sure of herself to simply follow the bouncing ball of life and see where it took her prior to this realization. And then as she is able to take in the moment and learn to not react, but actually respond and feel out the situation or the opportunity, she built that self-surety that she feels when she, if she feels fear, she evaluates it and decides if it's time to leave or if she could stay and adjust her energy again from reaction to responding. And by taking the breaths and feeling the shifts, from that from that reactive place to one of confidence and surety. And since that time, the relationship went from one she was going to leave <laughs> to one of marriage <laughs> and so far to little ones. <laughs> it's amazing what breathing will do, isn't it? I mean, I'm not going to go there. Uh, yay to the little ones. So as I discussed before, I love acronyms. So when I read years ago, a quote from Neil Donald Walsh, Walsh, uh, he's a self-described spiritual messenger and author, which read fear is an acronym in the English language for false evidence appearing real. I used it and I liked it, but I found it shifting for me to false expectations appearing real because the the two faults and evidence was just messing with my head. Uh, So a little bit of literary license going on in the acronym world, but I feel like it fit well for what I was seeing in myself and my clients. There were a lot of false expectations on how something was supposed to work. So they would get so disappointed and not be able to move forward as they were tied to how they thought it would turn out. And one of the dangers of this is it will block some really great synchronistic events from happening. You know, our universe is so magnetic that we are literally drawn to our experiences and our experiences are drawn to us. And I feel like if we're always trying to figure it out, we're actually negating some of those opportunities coming to us. So if there is a feeling of fear and you have no um, reason to be in fear, maybe look at your expectations of, could be an expectation that it's going to go wrong. You know, a lot of people like to falsely prophesize about those things. So uh, in the area of further acronyms, 
one of my favorite peeps, uh, Lisa Libertori, is she is the queen of acronyms. This woman can come up with an acronym on the spot. And she's come up with some really amazing, always funny. I loved um, one of the ones she did was Gus, God, Universe, Source. <laughs> she would say, thank Gus for things, <laughs> um, which was especially touching for me because my uncle used to call my daughter Gus and because he would pretend that he didn't know her name. And I'm like, you know what? I think he was calling her universe, God, Universe, and Source <laughs> and not just being <laughs> the guy he was. So when we started discussing this uh, vibration within her life, she came up with an acronym for excitement. And I asked her if I could share it. And it, it she obviously said yes, or I wouldn't be talking about this. And she, as she sees it, fear is very black and white, not fun at all. So it just remains those false expectations appearing real. But excitement is a whole different story in the world of acronyms. And this is a wonderful way to shift your energy. And she is always fashionable, always brilliant in her energy. So wouldn't we want her to feel that inside as well? So as we were, she sends me this acronym and I asked her if I could use it. I broke it out within the book. So I'm going to read it to you with a little bit of literary, again, license here. So of course, excitement, E, energy because everything in the universe is energy. The next one is where we have a little bit of room because it actually starts with an E, but we want to talk about exogenous, which yes, I did have to look up how to say it, which is defined as due to an outside cause, which she saw as how we often see our lives, and but then find that we aren't always connected to self and that realizing this is exciting, exogenous. <laughs> um, I'll use that in Scrabble one day. So C, certainty. The knowing we all have inside that once tapped into is a calm source of balance and also the gas pedal for moving forward. I, intuition, of course. We all have it. We all come in with it and we carry it eternally. T, trust. Again, we are born with it and often have to learn to do it again once we're willing. And that trust in self is so important. Another E, expectation, because it's a great word when applied with forward motion in regards to the greatness of one's soul and the ability to succeed in whatever is tried. M, movement or motion, always moving forward and being willing to see what is rocking and rolling in front of us. Another E, enlightenment, that place that many are trying to achieve only to find they had it all along if they had just listened to self. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. N, knowing, allowing oneself to be in the now and accepting things as being present and not something in the future. I told her she should trademark that. T, totality. The feeling of the total self when physical self and soul become aware of each other and function as a whole unit. Powerful, fun, and totally awesome. So could you come up with your own acronym for excitement? What would you choose for your words? Can you give yourself a, a you know place to be creative? And put words that mean something to you in there. And you know what? It could be exciting. So that's our chapter on do you fear it or get excited by it? And being able to ask yourself that question is a gift because you then get to break down anybody else's messages that may be running around in your head too, um, that may be developed from external factors, Ex exogenous. See, I already forgot how to say it. Being able to have faculty over your own knowing and your own understanding of self is a, it's a, it's a, life force energy superpower. 
So think about that the next time you are considering doing something or talking to someone or applying for a job or anything. Wait, am I, is this fear or is is this excitement? Where did fear show up in my body? Where does excitement show up in my body? It actually very much shows up in two different places for me, which is helpful when I'm working with someone because if I intuitively feel fear, I know, oh, this is an excitement. I need to talk to them about this and help in some way. Um, and But if I feel it in that different area, and I don't want to lead you, that's why I'm not telling you where it is in mine, but um, when I feel it in a different area, I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. And sometimes I'm offering them that feeling of excitement so that they can uh, borrow it for just a moment and then tap into it themselves. So do this practice and come back to it like anything else in developing intuition. It's a muscle to be built and it's very multi-layered. So don't fear it. Get excited by it. See what I did there? <laughs> See you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to Intuition, Your First Sense. As always, please like and subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening to it. Leave a review and take a minute to share it with a friend. You can find me all across social media at, at Coach Vicki Baird, and you can book a virtual session with me from wherever you are in the world at VickiBaird.com slash booking. That's V-I-C-K-I-B-A-I-R-D dot com slash booking. Thank you again and see you on the next episode.